Hi there. How's everybody doing? This is Sergio Sice with the Real Estate uh, Hedgehog Podcast. We're on podcast number 40, and I love round numbers like 40 because uh, it makes me feel like we actually are accomplishing something. So we got 40. I can hardly wait to hit 50. And of course, I've got uh, <laughs> I've got my partner, Sam. Sam Yin. Sam, how are you doing, brother? How's everything going? I'm doing good. Everything was going good until you said what you just said, because uh, you know what went through my mind? I remember what? when 40 hit. Things hurt more, and I healed a lot <laughs> slower. So 50 is coming up soon, and I'm scared. <laughs> so here's the difference between you and me. You remember 40, and you're thinking, oh, man, that was when things started to change. I, I'm moving slower. I'm, um, You know, things hurt a little bit more. But for me, being, I don't know, I'm like 15, 16, 17 years older than you, <laughs> I fondly remember 40 when things didn't hurt as much oh, as yeah. they hurt now. Fondly. You know? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Honestly, remember those 40. For, for you, you're thinking, oh, man, that's when things started to slow up for me. And for oh, me, yeah. I'm thinking, those were the good old. What I'd like to talk to uh, about uh, for our audience today is a topic that we've covered before, but I think that it's important that we do a little nuanced stuff, and that's on rents. And one of the reasons I wanted to do that is because on this week's newsletter, I, uh, I, put, I, I wrote about a particular article in the Wall Street Journal where they were talking about how rents seem to in some markets have peaked and as a result of that uh people are starting to move back in with parents so they're starting to move back in or or they're bring, coming together as roommates because the rents are getting a little out of control and you know rents just like interest rates they'll go up and down they, there are market uh rates that you have to or or the market you have to attend to to make sure that you don't uh the market will correct you if it has to. So yeah. let's just keep it at that. But along with that, uh, it's important to know your market. So for some markets, rents will be higher than in others. For some markets, rents are actually coming down compared to others. And that's something that you kind of have to be aware of. And I know you've dealt with some of this stuff too, haven't you, uh, Sam? Oh, yeah. I've been on the receiving end and uh, the inquiring end. So the interesting part was uh, there was a time where I was making improvements on an apartment and people are always watching you. And I had a neighboring apartment manager contact me and ask me how much I'm charging for my rents because they want to know if they can bump up their rents. And on the inquiry, and I myself, one of the things I do for an area to kind of solidify how much rent I think that market can take is I would call some of the property managers of the area and ask, hey, what, what's the going rate for that size or square footage of an apartment? Excellent. And then the other thing to keep in mind is with rents is sometimes, depending on where you're at, the city or the county can't put caps on those rents. Oh, and yeah. I were talking earlier, you were talking about earlier about how the city of Pomona, which is in the San Gabriel uh, area of uh, the county of Los Angeles, which is east of downtown, just as a reference point, uh, they just recently passed a law on uh, uh, a rent control law, right? Oh, yeah. They, uh, they did it, and no one saw it coming. They just had a meeting one day, and their city council passed the law, and it was effective immediately. And this was uh, probably about a month or so ago. And basically, they had capped the rents to 4% annually, just okay. out of nowhere. So what that's about, why it's so important to keep your rents at market rates. Right. So what about, I mean, right now we've got, so you said 4% period. So what about inflation? I mean, right now we've got inflation at Oh, eight, I know. That, that's the hard two, part. Two, it has, so, they don't care about inflation. <laughs> They don't, well, hold on. I know that the state of California will allow you to raise rents at a certain rate above the inflation rate, correct? No, no. So for the state of California, uh, as a whole, the, the way the law came out about three years ago is that as a landlord, you can raise rents 5% annually plus CPI not to exceed 10 so okay. you can do 5%, and if inflation is 3% for that year, then you can add the three, so that's a total of eight. If the inflation is, let's say, this past year at 9%, you're 
you can go five, but you can't add nine to it. You can only go up to a total of 10%. Okay. However, okay. in the verbiage of the California law, it also defaults back to city or municipalities. They are allowed to impose stricter rent control rules. For example, Los Angeles, it's like 3%. Now, Pomona, it's 4%. But with Pomona, it's a cap of 4%. So it's 4% or inflation, whichever is lower. So if I've got 8% inflation, that means the most I could increase my rent would be 4%, correct? Correct. So I'm losing So I'm losing that 4%. Debt. Yeah. I'm falling behind. But what if... What happens if inflation were, let's just say, 2%, like it was, you know, maybe about a year ago? Then I could only raise it how 2%. high? 2%. <laughs> oh, okay. I can't go up to the 4%. Yeah, that's that's that the thing, whatever. you know. The, and believe it or not, across the country, spe specifically in these progressive cities, mm -hmm. uh, I guess that's the term they use these days, right? The progressive cities, yeah. they mm -hmm. are going mm -hmm. towards this because this has become... Uh, real popular around the nation as you know people are struggling to pay rents um, however obviously as as landlords and investors this impacts our decision making of where we want to buy or where we want to invest in absolutely so i know that you had a property in pomona right uh not yeah long. i did and uh you know i didn't see this law coming but i had sold it last summer which is Thank goodness for that. Right, right, right. Otherwise, you kind of get stuck in this whole thing there. Yeah. So now the new owners, they're having to have to deal with that. Well, anybody in Pomona that buys. Correct. In Pomona, and you're absolutely right. So you have to be, as an investor, there, you have to get some knowledge. You have to be able to do your research to find out what are the rules on any given market. And I know that's one of the things that I do because, you, as you know, I like to go out, venture out beyond California uh, other states, Indiana, Missouri, and um, Idaho. And that's one of the first questions that I almost always ask. In fact, it is probably one of the first questions I ask property managers that I'm going to work with is what are, are, is there rent control, number one? And if there is, what are the rules? And I can tell you that right now, generally speaking, they're much easier to work with than here in, in California. Some places just don't have rent control. No, yeah. hey, whatever the market will bear, whatever you can, your, if your people can, if your renters can pay it, charge it. Uh, other places, they're a little bit more, they they, they might have a, like a soft cap. Oh, yeah, they don't want you going over 10 or 15% on any given year. Oh, okay. You know, so, and of course, for me, and, and I know it's true for you also, it's not about how high you raise, increase your rents. It's more of, what is the market doing? What is, you know, I need to be competitive, both on the upside and the downside, because I don't want to charge so low that I can't uh, provide a good location, a clean, safe location for my tenants. But certainly I don't want to charge so high that they start looking for somewhere or somewhere else to save 50, 70, $100 a month. So you have to kind of like uh, play that balancing act uh, to make sure that you know where you're at on that yeah, scale. No, I, I agree. But it's it's always um, a good reminder, you know, when these situations come up like Pomona, is that you got to keep it close to market rents because when these things happen and inflation goes out of control, you're going to have a hard time trying to catch up if they put a cap on how much you can raise. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. So that article that, that uh, I referenced in the newsletter was very interesting, like I said, because... There are some markets where uh, in the past year, rents have, or I should say more like in the past couple of years, last two years, rents have increased like at 15 and 20% per year. Yeah. And that's not sustainable. Uh, you know, in, in the newsletter, I wrote about how bulls make money, bears make money, but pigs get slaughtered, you know? <laughs> yeah, and, I like and, that. It, yeah, no, and, I, and I said, don't be a pig about raising rents. Raise them to market rates so that you're competitive with everybody else. But don't don't do it so to the point where you start having problems because you have to start having a higher turnover. And as you and I both know, turnover costs a lot of money. Yeah, um, that's that's the biggest cost in uh, the rental business is turnover. I, I would say that you know, uh, having to turn over one or two apartments 
depending how many apartments you have, obviously, but even one or two could really put a big dent on your return on investments if you're not careful. Oh, yeah. Big time. Yeah. Because like I said, you have to you know, go in there, maybe rehab, put a little money, might have to advertise. Uh, you might miss one or two months worth of rent and bam, all of a sudden what might have been a seven or eight or nine percent return on that investment. You know, next thing you know, it's two or three or four percent yep. and you're struggling a little bit. So anyways, anything else that you can say about um, about this rent thing? No, I mean, there's a lot of resources out there. We've talked about it before. You've got uh, you know, we, we just mentioned the property managers, but we also got rental meter on, online. Just go in there, put in the square footage, the size, the location. They'll kind of give you the average rents. You use Zillow. Zillow also does that pretty well. And it's not perfect, but it gives you a general idea. You know, obviously, presentation is a big deal. How you present that apartment, you can go above or you can't, you know, go much more than at whatever it's advertised. Um, right. And a lot of times it's also neighborhood specific. You might just be one or two blocks away and you might be in a really prestigious and desirable neighborhood. But conversely, you might be one or two blocks away from a very desirable neighborhood and your little block is not very desirable. So you have to know all these things. Absolutely. Know your markets. Hey, I wanted to run something by you that we were ta talking about earlier. I was... Um, I was underwriting a property uh, yeah. earlier today, five units, and the numbers came back really good uh, considering everything. Um, even at the asking price, they were, uh, I was getting a, almost a 6% return on the money. But I started thinking, and it's it's a, a small commercial, five units, uh, the asking price is three, $329,000 out in Indianapolis. But I started thinking, do I want to tie up money for five or six or seven years? Because, you know, most loans are at five or six or seven percent. Every now and then you can get a 10 year loan. Uh, it, do I want to tie up money for that period of time for a small piece of property when there I might be able to get, you know, that opportunity cost? There might be a 20 unit or 25 unit that we could put that same money to work and maybe make even more. But you were telling me something interesting earlier. I'd like you to kind of fill in the audience on that information you gave me, which to me was like uh, mind blowing in one respect. And also I started thinking very differently about whether or not I should go for these smaller commercial investments. Oh, yeah. First off, don't don't ever overlook smaller investments because they can add up and you can be very wealthy with a portfolio of really strong, small investments. But Secondly, you know, traditionally, we always know that in the commercial side, most loans are either three, five or seven years. Once in a while, they're 10 years and then they're due, meaning you either have to refinance it, sell it, do something. Uh, they're going to call that note due. However, recently, well, not recently, but uh, I've been able to find uh, lenders out there that will do a full, not only amortized 30 year loan, but do in 30 years. So you get to spread that whole thing out and you you minimize that risk or anxiety because you know your payment will be locked whether you can refinance, sell or do whatever. If you can't, you're still good for the entire duration of 30 years. Um, on top of that, there are lenders out there now that I've found, and I'm sure they were there before, but they're becoming more and more popular and that's the sign of the times, and they know the price, uh, the cost ratios. They're willing to lend on a debt service coverage ratio of one. That's wow. very impressive. One, where yes. traditionally it's always been 1.2 or 1.25. Right. Um, in fact, there are some that will actually do a debt service coverage ratio of 0.8, but those specific ones you have to submit a game plan or a business plan to show that you're going to bring it to one or above within six months or 12 months. So there's there's those as well. But those two things alone changes the game for you as an investor trying to get into the market. Absolutely. When you told me that, like I said, it kind of blew my mind because all of a sudden for a while there, I'm thinking, you know what, I don't, again, I don't want to tie up my money on small invest, uh, on small commercial because, I, I you know, that opportunity cost. Yeah. And I'm going to have to do something with that property in three, five, seven years anyways. And it could be, to me, it was kind of more of a pain in the butt than anything else. But when you told me that there are 30-year amortized loans due in 30 years for small commercial, and again, we're talking maybe five, six, seven units, 
that changes the ball game for me. Now I'm yeah. thinking, wow, okay, I am willing to hold on to a property maybe for 10 or 12 or 15 years if it's got a good cash flow, you know, mm -hmm. good cash. Why get rid of a good cash flow company, uh, property, you know? So yeah. that's amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and look into that. And maybe on this particular property in Indianapolis, I don't see, I'll see what I can do and maybe make that happen and uh, uh, bring in a little bit of extra cash for the new year. So yeah, and it, it kind of to remind the audience, always expand your pool of resources, you know, keep yeah. on networking, make those calls, make those inquiries. It's out there. You just have to be able to find it, make the connection, uh, give them the stuff that you, you know, you have for your qualifications and begin to, to work with them and dabble in one or two or three here and there. Eventually you build a network of folks you can rely on and call upon when you need them. Right. So if people want to find out about these companies, should, what do you think? Should they send us a, a, an email? You know, they can send, they can send us an email directly to real estate hedgehog at gmail.com. I'd be more than happy to send out these companies. Um, and from there you can probably find others, but uh, these are the resources that we found and we're building into our, kind of a network or team of folks that we can call upon. Excellent. So yeah, so an email to real estate uh, hedgehog at gmail.com. We'll get you that information. Any final words before we close up? No, that's it, man. I mean, it, it's been a good week. It's it's going to rain all week this week. Yeah. Um, the reports are coming out from the feds. All the data is coming out this past week and this week. Um, I think, you know, the election is tomorrow, midterms. Yeah. So yeah, for the folks who have uh, been around for a while, you know that this is really the pivot point in the market, in the economy. Every time there's a midterm election, things are a little going a little turmoil. But after the election results come out, depending on who wins, there is some stability that can arise from it because it's predictable how the people who win will create policies for the economy. And that's when markets become more stable. So, you know, stay tuned. We'll find out who wins after tomorrow night. And from there, you know, we'll, we'll know. We'll know where, where to invest best. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Sam. It's good to see you again, my brother. Uh, we'll catch everybody, our, uh, our audience. We'll, we'll see you around at the next go around. And uh, everybody have a great, um, a great week. Cool. You have a good one. Take care.